a detailed course on candle making. Well, I wish there was a video like this when I first started out. The idea of creating a detailed course like this came to my mind when I was responding back to a YouTube comment recently. I've realized that our community has slowly started to grow and we have new learners from across the world. Whilst candle making is exciting, it can also get daunting when you don't know the ins and outs and when you don't know what kind of decision to make when it comes to wax or other raw materials. And hence my aim with this video is to dig deeper and to help you all discover all that there is about candle making so that you not only learn but also apply it in the most right manner and it also helps you guide your purchases. I've spent lakhs of rupees learning you know about this products, making mistakes and getting back up. I just don't want you all to go the same path and hence I'm going to walk you through everything that there is about candle making, the ins, the outs, the nicks, the knacks, everything so that whenever you make your own purchases whenever you have to make the right whenever you have to make the decisions about any materials or about anything else in terms of your candle making process you know what to do and you are able to pay and you are able to spend your money wisely so without any further ado let's begin this video today we are diving into the foundation of it all so let's begin with your favorite subject, wax. Well, it might seem simple, but trust me, the kind of wax you choose has a huge impact on the overall quality of your final product. Think of wax as the heart and soul of your candle. It affects the burn time, the scent through, and even the final creation of, even the final look of your creation. Now let's explore the different types of waxes we have in our candle making toolbox. Soy wax. This is a popular choice for many reasons. It's natural plant based wax which burns clean and is often considered eco-friendly. Soy wax holds fragrance beautifully and hence becomes a great choice for making scented candles. One word of caution, if you are using pure soy flakes for your candle making, these uh, soy flakes are rigid and firm in texture and can only be used for pillar candle making. However, even when you use it with pillar candle making, they tend to be firmer and they tend to make, uh, they tend to develop cracks. So to mitigate those downsides, what you can do is work with different wax blends. Wax blending is a very nice way to neutralize the downsides of any kind of wax. For example, if you are working with massage candles or if you are working with soy butter wax which is really really soft, then you can try and neutralize the downside of its softer texture by introducing a harder texture wax such as the soy wax chunks or the soy wax palettes. This way, you will be able to work with multiple soy, um, with multiple wax blends. You can also try blending different kinds of waxes. For example, you could do one part of soy wax, uh, soy butter wax, and one part of beeswax. You can try one part of coconut wax and one part of soy wax chunks. Mixing and matching will also help you find your perfect blend that works for your candles. Plus, this also becomes a great USP when it comes to selling your own creations. Please remember, there is no adulteration that is caused by blending and mixing and, mixing and matching of waxes. It only improves its characteristics and its stability. Now, let's dig deeper into soy wax. Soy wax comes into multiple varieties. Apart from the soy butter wax, all the other forms are only created for the sake of convenience and for the sake of can making candle making more convenient and making the candle making process more easy for all the candle makers out there. So let's dig deeper and understand the kind of soy wax available in the market. The first one is soy butter wax, the other one is the traditional soy wax that comes in chunks, then there is soy wax flakes, then there is soy wax palettes. 
लाइक आई सेड सॉय बटर वैक्स इज द ओनली डिफ्रेंशिएटर बिटवीन ऑल दीज वेराइटीज फॉर रीजन सॉय बटर वैक्स कम्स इन अ क्रीमियर टेक्सचर विच इज मोर सॉफ्टर ऑन विच इज मोर सॉफ्टर देन ऑल द अदर काइंड ऑफ वैक्स इन इट्स नेचुरल स्टेट द सॉय बटर वैक्स इज स्पेशली फॉर्मुलेटेड फॉर मेकिंग मसाज ऑयल कैंडल्स और फॉर मेकिंग कंटेनर कैंडल्स दैट रिक्वायर हाई वैक्स अधिजन टू द जार इट इज ऑल्सो यूज फॉर मल्टीपल कस्मेटिक पर्पसेस आई वर्ड टू मेनी पीपल टॉकिंग अबाउट हाउ सॉय वैक्स इज नॉट गुड फॉर द स्किन इट्स जिस दैट देव नॉट रियली डिस्कवर्ड द सॉय बटर वैक्स विच इज स्पेशली फॉर्मुलेटेड फॉर कस्मेटिक्स एंड फॉर स्किन केयर so the next time you hear anyone talking about soy wax not being good for the skin just research the soy butter wax bees wax bees wax is another natural option when it comes to wax it burns long and clean and has a natural honey scent however it can get a bit pricier than soy wax bees wax come in two different colors one is the sunshine yellow which is minimally processed and all the impurities are removed and then they are transformed into a shape that is more convenient for use and the other one is heavily processed and bleached so that the scent of the honey is minimized and all the impurities are removed so these are the two kinds of honey wax that you get honey bees wax that you get in the market coconut wax this one has been gaining a lot of traction lately this is another option in terms of plant based wax which burns clean and has a great scent through coconut wax is known for getting the most luxurious candles that are frosty white now let's talk about paraffin wax paraffin wax has been around ages and is a by product of petroleum it is a cost effective wax which is used for candle making paraffin wax has an opaque like color and can hold fragrance and scent really well the only downside is that it is not great for the environment or human health and it also produces a lot of soot however with the growing environmental concerns crafters across the world are now preferring natural alternatives now let's talk about gel wax gel wax is primarily composed of hydrocarbons which are refined and processed to make it look like a clear gel like wax which is specially formulated for candles while gel wax is aesthetic and beautiful in its look and feel however it's worth noting that it is not made from renewable sources when you are working with candles mess is inevitable and hence i highly suggest you use a silicone sheet or any kind of paper or any kind of plastic material that will help you save your surfaces from getting spoiled this one thing has been a very pivotal uh, part of my candle making process i am sure if you are following our uh, journey along you have seen i am always cleaning my vessels i am always cleaning my workspace as well with the alcohol spray see there are two reasons why i use alcohol spray one is that it makes cleaning effortless two is that it makes sure that my workspace is clean and disinfected which also helps me create beautiful candles for you all so whenever you are working please make sure to follow the simple steps of cleaning your workspace or just cleaning your containers with the disinfectant this will not only have a great impact in your creations but will also talk volumes about your brand and talk volumes about the measures you take to provide high quality candles So let's talk about the induction cooktop. This one has been with me for years now. When I first started my candle making journey, I was making candles solely in my kitchen and my kitchen table and my platform were, you know, my workspaces. But as in when I started getting more work, I realized I had to create some standard protocol and some way of working and that's when I decided to get an induction cooktop. This not only minimizes the mess that we create in the kitchen, but it also helps 
has created dedicated workspace for our candle making. An induction cooktop is a great way to melt wax when we are just starting out or if we are just starting to make candles. These are these uh, machine is very good in making and melting wax at a very faster rate and there are multiple temperatures that you can work with so there is no uh, problem at all with working with induction cooktops or you really don't have to spend a lot of money buying too many induction cooktops or too many heating appliances ultimately it all boils down to having a simple appliance that is able to do the job for you at a very cost effective price Wig stickers are a really handy tool especially for new and expert candle makers alike. They not only improve the burning of your candle but also make sure that all the candles that you are making with the help of wig stickers are perfect and prevent any kind of tunneling or any kind of aggressive or adverse experience when it comes to using your candles. Now let's talk about another important aspect of candle making, wigs. Now I'll start from discussing the basics to the advanced of wigs. The first one is our classic cotton wig which is available with a paraffin coating. This wig is only formulated to work with paraffin waxes or if you are making tea light candles. When it comes to choosing wigs for soy wax candles, you would want to prefer a braided cotton wig which has multiple cotton fibers embedded and braided into them which will be able to hold the high strength waxes such as soy wax, beeswax and other kinds of waxes. The braided cotton wigs also come in different sizes. These different sizes serve a purpose. If the braided cotton wig is thin in size, it will means that it will cover a smaller diameter of your jar. However, if it is thicker in size, it means that it will cover a larger candle jar diameter. So please make sure to study the wigs before purchasing them or to be able to ask multiple questions before you sort of arrive to the right wig that fits your candle making needs. The best option is to sample a few out and then make a bigger purchase. The braided wigs also come into multiple formats. One is the one is the ready-made wigs that you find in the market. The other one is the loose wigs, which can be used to create your own wigs. I will show you all the process of making your own wigs in the coming process. The other kinds of wigs are eco wigs, which are made up of paper, cotton and wooden fibers. These burn really well for coconut wax, for beeswax and even soy wax. You may want to sample, you know, you may want to sample out a bit before you buy these in large quantities. The next ones are wooden wigs. Wooden wigs add a very luxurious touch to your candles. However, finding the right wooden wig is quite a trick. So you may also want to test and experiment a few before you sort of understand which one is the right for you. So different sizes of wicks work with different sizes of containers. If you are using a smaller container then a thinner wick might do well for you. However, if you are using a bigger container which has a larger diameter then you will have to test around multiple wicks whether it is wooden wicks or whether it is braided wicks as well. Sometimes you can work around with a thicker wick which is able to cover the entire diameter. However, if it does not do the trick then you might have to use multiple wicks. You can see there are multiple variants available in the market when it comes to candles. There are people that are selling single wick candles. There are people that are selling double wick candles. That is only because the wick is not able to cover the entire diameter of the candle. And hence it's really important to use more than one wick so that it can distribute heat evenly throughout the surface of the candle. Now let's talk about stearic acid. Steric acid is composed of long chain fatty acids and in the candle making industry it's used as a hardening agent. It makes your wax harder and it also helps it burn cleaner and longer. Some people also use it to make the colors of the candles brighter and it also helps in improving the longevity of the candle. 
Now let's talk about fragrance oils. Fragrance oils are a great way to add a personal touch to your candles. Fragrance oils are basically synthetic oils that are meant uh, that are made in the labs and they mimic the natural scents of the environments around us. You can find scents such as floral, woody and whimsical scents with the help of fragrance oils. They are also cost effective when it comes to candle making. Whereas if you work with the essential oils, they are really milder and they have limited scents and you'll have to use a lot of it which may not really fit everyone's budget when it comes to making candles. Fragrance oils also have a lot of variety in them which makes it great for candle makers who want to provide multiple scent varieties for their customers. So the best way to begin with fragrance oils is to start slow. You don't want to really add a lot of fragrance oil and you know it, it will become really irritating for you or for anyone that burns the candles. You want to start low with the base amount of 5 to 6 percent and then take it up a notch depending on the kind of scent it creates and the amount of scent through it has in the environment. So slow uh, start is the key to perfecting your fragrance oil percentages in terms of your candles and when you're working with fragrance oils it's really important that you let your candles cure for a minimum amount of time before you test them out for our small business we try and cure our candles for at least 14 days before it is made commercially available for sale your candles might require less or more depending on the kind of wax you use. So please try and study the wax that you are working with and accordingly test your fragrance oils. There is a lot to be discussed about fragrance oils and uh, I have discussed this in detail in our candle making ebook as well. So if you are serious about learning candle making for your small business, you might want to check out my candle making ebook. It's a treasure trove of knowledge which will be helpful in taking your business to to the next level now let's talk about the accessories that make your candle making journey easier so the first thing that I want to talk about is a metal sustainer it's a very classic option when it comes to holding or supporting your wicks these metal sustainers can be used to make a single candle or to also make two wick candles the next one is the wooden or the bamboo clips these are used when you are making candles that are having a smaller diameter and it holds your wick perfectly the next one is a bamboo chopstick it's a really great way to hold your wax in the nicest way possible the next thing that we're going to talk about is a steel straw this helps in adhering the wick to the jar um, whilst too many wick Wicking options are not available here. A steel straw has been really, really helpful in my candle making journey, even when I have to make hundreds of candles daily. The next one is a wick needling tool. This is especially helpful when you are making silicone, uh, when you are making decorative or home decor candles, which would require you to wick the mold. This not only helps in perforating the mold in the nicest and cleanest manner, but it also helps in keeping the mold as is and increases the shelf life of the mold. The next one is a heat gun. A heat gun is used to preheat the jars, the molds and to also provide a nice finish to your candle creations. If you're not into making container jar candles, you can completely skip this accessory or tool because otherwise there's not much use to it. The next one is small measuring spoons. If you want to add any additives to your candle making process, you can use these spoons so that you put the exact measurements and so that you don't overdo any additive. Now let's talk about pouring pitchers. Pouring pitchers come in different sizes and forms. The most reliable one that I have found so far is the steel pouring pitcher. It is made up of steel and is really helpful in the candle making journey. Well, if you have watched my videos, you've seen that I use pouring uh, steel pouring pitchers really extensively because they are really great when it comes to pouring uh, candles in uh, the most efficient way possible. However, in the coming years, I've also found that a glass pitcher is also very good. The only thing is that if you are clumsy like me and if you worry about the glass breaking and 
charring your entire space you may want to ignore it however for those who are a bit more proficient in their making process they can definitely consider this pouring pitchers because they come with measurement tags and they are really really helpful when you are working with accuracy the next ones are pouring pitchers that are in the plastic forms these are not made with cheaper plastics these are made with high quality plastic that can withstand higher heating temperatures these are not only helpful when you are making candles in smaller quantities but are also helpful when you need a little more precision into pouring more perfectly and into avoiding any more drainage or spills now let's talk about colors when it comes to colors for candle making there are three main types one is the classic powder paste color which i would never recommend to anyone because it creates a big mess when you're trying to work with it the second one now let's talk about the colors in the candle making process there are mainly three types of colors that are used in the candle making process one is the powder form the other one is the chip form and the other one the third one is the liquid dye form the most preferred met the most preferred one for me has been the candle dye liquid because it melts effortlessly and mixes effortlessly into my molten wax chips can work however you've got to reach a higher temperature when it comes to working with chips and you've got to stir them vigorously to make sure that the entire chip has melted effortlessly otherwise you're going to end up with blotches the powder the powder colors are not really recommended because they don't really blend well into the waxes and can also and can always leave blotches and uneven colors you may want to try these out and see what fits best for you all now let's talk about molds when it comes to molds there are mainly two to three types of molds one are aluminum molds which are used for pillar candles the other ones are silicon molds which are used for home decor candles whether it is pillar or a different shape and the other one is polycarbonate molds which are specially used for making pillar candles so when it comes to um, aluminum uh, molds you may want to you may want to um, you know create a hole on the bottom so that you can uh, wick your thread in advance otherwise you will need a separate machine to wick the hole into your ready candle and when it comes to silicon molds silicon molds are really really good efficient way to making your candles however as i suggested please use a wick needling tool because it will increase the life of your candle if you use any other materials to um, you know to create a hole inside of the mold it can end up tearing the mold even further decreasing the shelf life of the mold and hence it's important to be safe when you are working with silicon molds also when it comes to working with silicon molds always try and opt for high quality molds there are some people that sell really low quality molds that tear up really really fast so you may want to do a little bit research before you buy these molds the third ones are the polycarbonate molds as i discussed these are made of plastic and they are really high quality they withstand the test of time and uh, they are not breakable as well so these are the perfect choice when it comes to making candles i'll also be making candles in uh, the polycarbonate mold so that i can demonstrate so i can demonstrate the process and so that you all can see how effective it is when it comes to making the like candles with polycarbonate molds the other ones are fondant molds that come in various shapes and sizes and these are mainly used for wax melts you can easily find them on amazon and i'll add a link which will help you all find different kinds of molds on amazon now let's talk about stirring spoons stirring spoons come in different forms the mainly used ones are the bamboo stirring spoons which are not only eco friendly but are also helpful when it comes to releasing hot uh, releasing air bubbles from the candles the next one is a metal stirring spoon if you're using a bigger container or a bigger pouring pitcher then these metal stirring spoons are the perfect choice for you all now let's talk about the containers that we use to make candles in 
the most preferred choice is a glass container or a ceramic container because it can withstand higher pouring temperatures and it can also withstand the heat that is emitted when you light a candle then there are also eco-friendly options like the coconut shell which can also be used for candle making now let's talk about the tool that helps you maintain your candle making temperatures it is a thermometer a thermometer also comes in different um, shapes and sizes one is the thermometer stick it's a digital thermometer which you immerse in your molten wax and it helps you get the accurate measurement of your wax the other one is the dialer thermometer which also helps you do the same job however with a dialer the other one is a thermometer which has an end that you immerse into the wax and has a digital end point on the other side which also gives you the accurate measurements in terms of a digital thermometer. Now let's talk about silicon spray. For people who are having difficulties with getting the perfect candles or with unmolding their pillar candles, y'all can definitely use a silicon spray. This is not only helpful in releasing the waxes but it also helps in increasing the shelf life of your molds. Now let's talk about weighing machines. A weighing machine is especially helpful when you are making candles in smaller quantities or when you have to measure your fragrances in accurate numbers. They help in removing the guesswork out of picture and help you get the most accurate numbers and make the best perfect candles. They can come in multiple sizes as well. I have two of them. Depending on the kind of candles I make, I use these ones. The first one is a bigger one which I use to measure my wax and the smaller one is the one that I use for measuring out my fragrance oils. The next one are beakers. These are glass beakers which can also be used to measure out your fragrance oils. But if you don't prefer this, don't worry. You can always go back to using your measuring scales, add your molten uh, wax into a container and then put it on a scale and then you can pour your fragrance oil that also works really really well and cuts down on unnecessary expenses let's talk about mica it's a very eco-friendly alternate it's a very eco-friendly material that helps give a nice sheen to your candles these come in different colors as well you can try these if you're interested in adding a beautiful color and shine to your candles the next one is a sieve. A sieve is used to purify smaller uh, particles of uh, dust and debris that are inside of the wax. You may first try pouring your wax as is. However, if you find that there are impurities in your wax, then you can consider using these sieves. I'll add a link below for you all to make a purchase for us. Now we are going to talk about mold sealer. A mold sealer is used to seal the bottom of your wax when you are making pillar candles. This helps in effectively preventing any wax spills or leakages that may prevent you from making those perfect pillar candles. I will be demonstrating the process as well so that you all know the magic of these mold sealers. Now that we have all the basics out of our way, let's start creating some beautiful candles. So the first candle that I'm going to make today is a pillar candle. I have lately fallen in love with pillar candles and I just love how they can transform any space and can make your home beautiful. So for today's video, I'm going to use this pillar candle polycarbonate mold and we are going to start with weighing our wax. Let's talk about the wax measurements for jars. It's really easy to calculate how much wax your container needs. All you need to do is place your container on the weighing scale and tar it so that the weight is zero and then add water until you reach the level at which you want your wax to be filled. The amount that you see in grams as the weight is the amount of wax you, you need to use for your candle. Because I have multiple varieties of wax, I want to demonstrate a process where I am using a mix of soy wax flakes and soy wax chunks to make these candles. This mold contains about 350 grams of wax, so I am just going to use half and half of each. 
we also offer candle business consultation for everyone that's interested and is serious about turning their passion into profit so if you are interested i am going to add the link below and you can book your consultation call melting your wax in an induction cooker <laughs> melting melting your wax in an induction cooktop is very easy all you need to do is you need to use an induction base preferred vessel and fill it with water and then add your pouring pitcher which contains your wax this creates a process called double boiling method which avoids your wax from getting burnt and also helps it to melt faster and whilst this wax melts what i'm going to do is i'm going to start wicking my mold i'm going to use this use for wicking my molds i'm going to use these loose threads because it helps me customize my uh, it helps me customize my wicks according to the height of my candle so i'll be using a little extra wick here because um, i need some wick on the bottom as well as some wick on the top to support my pillar candle on the top i'll be using a wick sustainer such as a bamboo um, such as a bamboo chopstick to support my wick and on the bottom i'm going to use a mold sealer you will see the magic of this mold sealer it not only prevents but also makes sure that there are no wax spills at all and it makes your candle making process so so easier okay so now that we have our wax ready and now that we have our molds ready let us start with the pouring process as i told you in the beginning i love working with candle dyes and hence i'm just going to use a bit of it in this video as well so i'm just going to use a few drops in the beginning because i know that you know the colors are really really strong and are really really vibrant so i'm just going to take it slow when you're working with soy waxes the outcome that you get are beautiful pastel shades however when you are working with paraffin waxes since paraffin does not have its own color it tends to pick those brighter colors from the candle dyes now i'll just pour one to two drops and see the color that is come out as soon as i'm happy with the colored shade i'm going to continue with the stirring process stirring candle liquid dyes are really really easy all you need to do is use your stirrer and stir gently and it will very effortlessly melt it will very effortlessly bind with your wax at this stage you can also add fragrance oils if you like however i like to keep it clean and hence i'm not going to add any kind of fragrance oil to my pillar candle now that i know my colors have effortlessly blended into my pillar wax into my pillar candle wax i'm going to start with the pouring process as you can see here i'm pouring in a very slow motion and in the most efficient way possible this helps in preventing any air bubbles that can get trapped with the rapid pouring and it also helps in making sure that the candle cools down at a very sustainable temperature as you can see the mold sealer has worked perfectly in ensuring that there is zero wax spills and i just love it because it makes my candle making process so much easier now that we've poured our pillar candle i'm just going to use a bamboo chopstick and support my wick and i'm going to keep it aside now the next step for us is to make our own diy wicks i had also demonstrated a process in a video on my channel however since we are doing a detailed course it makes more sense to add it here to make a wick of your own all you need is a braided wick you need a metal base and you need a plier now what i'm going to do is i'm going to insert the wick inside of the plug inside of the metal base and then i'm going to leave some part of the wick on the bottom with the help of the plier i'm going to gently press 
the top portion of the metal base as you can see this is your DIY wick ready and you can work around with multiple sizes with these wicks there are wicks that are thicker in size there are also wicks that are thinner in size depending on your needs you can make these wicks because I'm making two wick candles today I'm going to create one more so let's quickly let's quickly repeat the process I'm going to measure out my wick and then I'm going to use a metal base I'm going to start inserting the wick inside of the base and with the help of the plier I'm going to gently press the top of the metal base and here we have our wicks ready now let's bring out our jar container that we are going to use for pouring our candles I'm using a white frosty jar today because it really looks nice and classy and uh, it will give a nice finish to our candles as well before you start any kind of candle making I would highly suggest that you clean your molds and you clean your containers really well this will help in avoiding any dust or debris from sticking to your container and will also improve the overall look and feel of your candles so with the help of an alcohol solution I am going to quickly start by cleaning my jar this not only helps in disinfecting my jar but will also make sure that there is no dust or debris that will clog my wick okay now that is out of the way we are going to use our wick stickers to adhere our wicks to the jars a wick sticker is a really great investment and a cost effective one when it comes to making professional grade candles because you want your wicks to stay in one place when it burns throughout the life of your candle and for people who are watching this video and who want to make candles for their business please make sure to use a wick sticker otherwise your wicks will move in multiple places than you can imagine and will also impact the overall life of your candle so you don't want to play with so you don't want to mess around with that different kinds of saw wax have different melting temperatures now that I'm using these wax I'm going to use um, I'm going to heat them to 80 degrees and then I'm going to add my my fragrance oils to it 80 degrees is a perfect temperature for my fragrance oils and my wax so that it blends effortlessly into the wax to blend the soy wax into my fragrance oil I'm going to use a stirrer it's a very simple process all you need to do is add the required amount of your fragrance oil in my case it's about 10% and you can just stir it really really slowly please make sure to be patient in this process because this will ensure that your wax has binded really well into your uh, fragrance oils and will give you the best outcome I prefer to mix my wax for about 2 minutes minimum at this stage you can also add other additives such as uh, candle dye colors or mica however I want to keep it simple for this video now that we have now that we have mixed our wax properly with our fragrance oils it's time for the pour pouring is a rather simple process but the most soothing and uh, relaxing one all you need to do is pour at a really consistent and slow rate this will avoid any air bubbles to be trapped inside of the wax and will help your wax cool down consistently now that we've poured our wax I'm just going to use a metal sustainer and support these and then I'm going to leave this to solidify so these two candles are going to take a few hours to solidify and hence I'm going to see you again in a few hours hi guys welcome back it's about six to seven hours that have passed and I have my pillar candle and my jar candle ready I want to show you all how it is turned out so as you can see my pillar candle it looks perfect so now let's quickly start with unmolding it 
the first step here is to remove the mold cilia because it's our knight in shining armor it just helps in supporting the filler candle and i want to release it nicely so i'm just going to remove it see this mold sealer is really really eco-friendly non-toxic and you can use it for as many as times as you want all you want to do is you want to just roll it up a bit and it's again ready for use and uh, now that i have this out of my way all i need to do is slowly turn this around and the wax will come out if you have challenges getting your wax out efficiently from your mold you can always use a silicone spray it is really helpful in making those perfect candles as for the jar candles i have not seen any dips into my candles because i was pouring at a really slow and consistent rate but with soy wax candles there are 80 to 90 percent chances that you will end up with a sinkhole but don't fret it's a natural part of the process all you need to do is use a heat gun and melt the top layer of the wax and it will work well if you don't want to do that just add an additional pour and that also helps in smoothing out the top layer candle making like any other craft or skill requires you to be patient with the process and to have trust in the process so there are possibilities that some pieces might not fit but that's where approaching different uh, approaching problems with different solutions or even just checking in with your community will make a great difference into your making process we also offer candle business consultation for everyone that's interested and is serious about turning their passion into profit so if you're interested i'm going to add the link below and you can book your consultation call if you found value in this video please give it a like and subscribe to my channel it means the world to me when you'll comment and when you like my videos it makes me really really happy so please do that and i'll see you in the next video bye bye